Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. It's time for us to look at exactly what's trending in the news. Oliver and I are going to take you through today's stories. Are we ready? Yes, we are. We are. All Always right, ready. let's do this. Now, at the start of the show, I had teased something very interesting. There have been several reactions to the defections from party to party. Some other people had said it's their right. Even the president, Muhammad Buhari, had given his two cents on this mm -hmm. when asked, saying it's their right to stick with one party or to defect to another. Now, the latest reaction to the defections from party to party by politicians is by one who is a politician himself, the former governor of Bayosa State, Timmy Prey Silva. He was elected as governor under the PDP, but later defected to APC, where he lost another governorship bid in 2016. Now, he has reacted to the reports of politicians defecting from the ruling party, APC, to the opposition party, PDP, and vice versa. Reacting to rumors that he has defected from the APC to the PDP, Timmy Prey Silva, in a statement released on his behalf by his media aide, Julius Bokoru, stated that he hopes that stating his unwavering commitment to the APC will cause those hallucinating about his imaginary defection to wake up. Now, while ordinary such rumors are laughable at best and preposterous at worst, Governor Silva wishes to state, for the sake of his supporters, that he remains firmly a member and a chieftain of the APC, a party he pioneered in Bielsa, and a party he believes is tearing the country out of the shackles of mediocrity and underdevelopment, the statement has said. Now, he's basically, he, he's trying to find a correlation between impulsive defections and mental instability, the quote says, and so he considers those flirting from party to party as people needing psychiatric evaluation. You know what? I like the word impulsive because I would personally agree that the defections have been quite impulsive. If you have a problem at home, you don't take your problem outside. You sort your problem at home. Let's say you have a very serious problem at home. Maximum, you leave home for a couple days and then you still come back home. Now, the reason why there is so much room for defection to begin with is because we are looking at two gigantic parties that have absolutely no ideology. And even if they do have an ideology, what's the difference between their ideologies? So it's very easy for them to shift between the two because their vision does not go further than the two. And that is where the problem lies. But isn't it a bit hypocritical that somebody who was elected governor under the PDP and eventually defected to the APC and lost another governorship attempt in 2016 under the APC Absolutely. would now come out to say that mm -hmm. they need psychiatric evaluation, something that he also did himself? Absolutely. But sometimes I think when you're writing a report or coming out with a story, you're also speaking to yourself too. There's nothing wrong with defecting as long as it goes with the constitution and the laws of your country country. However, it speaks a lot about your person and exactly what you stand for. If you've been voted in by your people under a particular platform, sometimes you're not necessarily voted in just because of you, but because of the party that you're under and people want that party to rule their particular state or country. If you now move to another party while you're still serving your term under the party you were voted in with, that says absolutely nothing about ideology and everything about self-interest. Yes, and in addition to that, I also see it as some sort of instability if you can't seem to find yourself in a mm. place and just stay there. Sometimes it shows a lot of, you know, it shows with the way that they govern Nigeria, it shows with the way that our politicians lead the country. Because like Chikudi would say, they're in the morning they're in APC, in the afternoon they're in PDP, in the evening they're in APC. Or PDP boxer, APC, APC Agbada. Agbada. Exactly. So at the end of the day, we keep preaching that when your house is, uh, is on fire, you don't, or when your house, your bulb, the bulb in your house is bad, you don't move out of your house to another house because the bulb is bad in your house. You stay there and fix it. To an extent, some people have argued that if moving from party to party by politicians has shown a little bit of instab a lot of instability mm. on their part, showing a lack of integrity, a lack of being able to be depended on, and it has also reflected in the way that they have governed Nigeria. Mm. So they try to do Nigeria, they try to govern one way, it's not working, they dump it, they move over. It's the same instability we see with all the uncompleted projects that a lot of them have. It's the same instability we see with the way they, they govern their constituencies yeah. and their states, and it's just so sad. Now, as much as Leila and I also say that it is your right to defect from party to whatever party you think would um, f allow you fulfill the best interest of service as you have in your heart. We also want to ensure that our politicians are taking into cognizance the fact that they are doing us a service. They're not putting their own personal interest in front of what they need to do. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. And this morning in the news, I saw something extremely disturbing. And it adds to this because, Olive, this is part of the system that is set up to destabilize Nigeria and part of the system that is set up to disempower the people. Now, this morning, BBC had carried out their own investigation on the Abacha loot and the $350 million that was being shared amongst Nigeria's most poor citizens. Now, they interviewed a woman who was receiving the 5K 
from the Abacha Lutz. And she said, how is this necessarily going to help me? That if I am even going to get a business off the ground and do something, I need about 20K to do <clears> that. <throat> now, it was, also, it was also mentioned in the report, which is something I never knew until this morning, that the Nigerian government have actually signed an MOU with Switzerland and the World Bank, giving the World Bank the freedom to tell us how to use that money. And it took me all the way back to structural adjustment programs that came out with a 76% failure rate in 1994. And this is 2018. And we are basically putting SAPs back into our system and letting the World Bank tell us that we should give the 5,000 Naira to the poorest citizens and that is the best way to spend $350 million. Because at the end of the day, we have shown that we're not capable of giving ourselves proper leadership. It's what happens when you're not acting, you know, out of, you're not acting on the responsibility that has been given to you. We've yeah. shown ourselves irresponsible. It's why we are going the same way we have our governors going cap in hand to the federal, to the presidency every month, waiting for allowances when they cannot um, demand enough, they can't mm -hmm. generate enough internal revenue. At the end of the day, you find that the presidency now determines what happened in a lot of these places. They don't have the autonomy or the freedom that they want. It's the same thing with us now. We can't say we want to do this, we want to spend our money in a certain way. It's a shame that this kind of report came out, you know, that we actually have to take orders from them on how to spend the money. By the end of the day, lots of um, stories have come up with regards to the recovered loot. Before now, a lot of people had expressed fear with regards to the fact that they feel that the recovered loot will be relooted again. Now, this 5,000 that they are giving, first of all, we all agree collectively that it's not really such a great idea. Because when the 5K finishes, how do you expect the average Nigerian to sustain, to survive? What we should now involve ourselves in doing is human capital development, teaching the people how to fish rather than providing fish for them because the fish would run out the fish would finish and then what next absolutely and it gets even worse because if we think about the structures of institutions like the world bank and the imf these are uh, these institutions that came about when we were still colonized by the west now looking at the world bank today isn't it interesting according to the reports that i have seen which i will also go back and verify that america get 20 percent of the say and africa as a whole gets seven percent of the say it's quite interesting to look at that and know that we are still stuck in that system. We'll be looking at that. I think it's also very important that we invite, we, we might be um, having someone over to come and talk about our debt. We found that our debt also has tripled and we, we don't know which way to go. There's so much that we need to do. There's so much adjustments we need to see, but it's the way to go forward now that we need to look at. And we, it's Absolutely. important that we have facilitators to come and discuss this with us Absolutely. from the financial sector as well. To enjoy more of this, our Ugunke videos when you just watch, Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.